content of chocolate is lost when they process it, when they ferment it. And think about this fermentation process. Just when I think about it, it makes me nauseated. You know, it's laid out in the sun, and all the bugs come in there, and it dries out, and then these acids come into it, and other things come in, and bacteria, and then they pound it into powder, and you eat it. So next time you eat it, M&Ms, think of what you're having, because you don't know what you just had. What well, was crawling on the ground at the particular time? But fermentation, <laughs> I didn't joke. I was reading that the other day. I was scared of what was in it. But again, this dutching and alkalization and fermentation is what? It's taking the goodness out of the chocolate. Nature gave us a good product. And then we try to make it better, which actually reversed it and made it worse. 60% lost. 67% of the epicatidins, our workhorse, is lost in processed chocolate. Processed chocolate, alkalized chocolate, Dutch chocolate, chocolate liqueur. All of them are processed chocolates lacking the right flavonoids. And then even in the, the other flavonoid we were just talking about, 86% loss of that particular flavonoid. That's why we didn't think it was in chocolate. It's because it was getting removed in the process, and somebody didn't even think it was there. Yet we see it's at the same levels as broccoli and red grapes. It's there giving us the benefits. So what we need is the right type of chocolate, the right type of cacao with the highest bioavailability that we can absorb, that we can get into our systems, and that we can utilize in our health. And I just went the wrong way. Is that good? So the, basically I want to talk about, because we have to absorb this chocolate. In the next few minutes, I want to talk a little bit about the absorption of it, the bioavailability of it, and then a few new studies and tie it to what we've learned from the University of Utah. But when you eat the chocolate, it hits your stomach, it's not being absorbed there. As a matter of fact, it's passing through, but the epicatidins, that small molecule, is being readily absorbed in the upper gut. That is the workhorse. It's being absorbed and getting in your body fast. It doesn't take long to sit in your stomach, then get in your upper intestine, and then that's where it's being absorbed. The larger molecules are going down further in the gut and being broken down by bacteria into other types of molecules that are, you know, that are readily available and absorbed into the system. So we have two different mechanisms of this chocolate being absorbed. But when we have it processed, when we have it added with sugars, the wrong sugars and the wrong fats, the body can't absorb it as well. It's being blocked. So we need this unprocessed chocolate so we can get it absorbed faster into our body. And then if it's absorbed, we're going to see increases in that ORAC value in our serum that antioxidant properties in the serum. We're going to see increases in something called the serum uh, glutathione, which is an antioxidant chemical found in our body that's very potent in preventing a lot of diseases. And we're going to de uh, see a decrease in this particular, in our urine, in this particular chemical that is a byproduct of oxidation. So if we see an increase in the ORAC value, that means it's being absorbed, it's, it's given to some antioxidant properties. We see a, a increase in this serum glutathione, that means it's stimulating the body to make more antioxidants. We're seeing a decrease in our urine of these byproducts, meaning it's being used and that we're decreasing the amount of oxidation done in our body. Then we know that chocolate is absorbed. And so I want to keep that in mind as we talk further in a few minutes about the chocolate and the chocolate that we have. I want to talk about cardiovascular disease because, you know, by next year, 2010, it's going to be the leading cause of death worldwide. Just not in the United States, worldwide, it's going to be the leading cause of death is cardiovascular disease. I was interested in a study done a few months ago, looked at postmenopausal women and their total flavonoid intake. And look at that. The only things that reduce the risk, and they looked at, they took the USDA flavonoid list of all these different uh, fruits and vegetables, looked at the whole list. The only ones that they found a reduction in was apples, pears, strawberries, and chocolate. Think of that list, how many things are on fruits and vegetables. The only one they found was those pears, apples, strawberries, and chocolate. Amazing. And then, you know, if we recall back from some of the talks I've done before, we have those large retrospective studies where they look backwards. The Dutch study where they looked at those elderly men and found that 50% reduction in cardiovascular disease by continuing on a chocolate over a long period of time. We know the Kuna Indian story from the Panama that, you know, that they, by drinking a, a foamy chocolate drink three times a day over the weeks that they have a markedly decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. When they leave the island, get on a western diet again, the risk of disease goes up. They go back to the island, start the drink, it starts going down. So we have these large retrospective studies showing the benefits of chocolate. We have this other study saying, hey, chocolate is probably one of the only few things that does re reduce cardiovascular disease. A study just replaced, a couple, uh, just even a month ago, looked at 43 studies over the last three years done on chocolate and hypertension found that overall it decreases that high blood pressure 
number by about 5.88 millimeters. It drops it a little bit. It also showed the diastolic blood pressure, which is your lower number, that it also dropped it. It was, you know, it was significant. The differences between the placebo patients and the ones that were on chocolate dropped their blood pressures. And again, that confirmed the same things we found in our University of Utah when we took active in different forms, an ounce three times a day and three ounces three times a day. We found that in our University of Utah study, the same as they just found in their meta-analysis, that it dropped. And we were using normal, hyperten normal tensive patients, ones who didn't even have high blood pressure, and they dropped a total of five millimeters, both in the top number and bottom number. You know, that was the same as weight loss, dieting, and even some blood pressure pills. And I'll tell you, it's hard to lose weight. It's hard to continue to diet. But if you can eat chocolate every day and lower your blood pressure, boy, that's a winning thing, isn't it? So just again, confirmed, 43 studies looked at, you know, 5.89, I mean, 5.8, and then three in the bottom number. But our University of Utah study, you can decide, and these were on patients that didn't even have high blood pressure, we saw that drop. When we start doing our new studies, looking at hypertensive patients, I think we're going to see even bigger drops. But just remember, even a small drop, even a, this five millimeter drop in blood pressure translates to a 50% reduction in strokes and heart attacks. And if it's you that's lowering your blood pressure by five millimeters and it reduces your chances of stroke or heart attack by 50%, that's a big deal. I'm willing to take that chance that I'm going to lower my blood pressure a little bit to reduce overall my risk of stroke and heart attack. But again, it's confirming the, our, our MXI study at University of Utah, what all the rest of the studies are finding. It's being metabolized, it's being used. One of the big mechanisms of this, and, and this is for the scientific people out there, is that it works on something called the nitric oxide uh, system in our body. You know, our bodies are complex. We talked about often with oxidation, about this little engine in our body that we put sugar in, we put oxygen in, it produces energy or the ATP, and out the smokestack comes the bad uh, chemicals like out you know, when you get smokestacks at a coal factory. But everything else in our body is like a factory. It's pathways. It goes one direction. If it's something happens and you look in a regular factory, it'll turn a little, you know, a little robot arm comes out and pushes it this direction. If something else is on it, it'll push it this direction. The same thing happens in our body. We do it with different chemicals that we have something called pathways. And changing those pathways will increase oxidation or decrease oxidation, increase inflammation and decrease it. And we're finding with chocolate doing our studies now that we're able to find those exact pathways and being able to block it and stop it and make big differences in our health. So the one dealing with hypertension, dealing with cardiovascular disease, is this nitric oxide. Decreases in nitric oxide in our body. If we have not enough nitric oxide in the body, we increase hardening of the arteries, the arteriosclerosis and cardiovascular risk. Chocolate stimulates, and it says nitric oxide synthetase. It's a chemical that makes more nitric oxide. So chocolate goes in there, turns on that pathway and says, make more nitric oxide. That more nitric oxide goes out, starts relaxing those blood vessel walls. We're going to see soon that it helps decrease inflammation, starts increasing blood flow to the brain. It is the key factor in why we're seeing so many positive results with chocolate because chocolate can turn on the production of nitric oxide. The pills that people take in blocking that. The chocolate's working even on that pathway to help lower our blood pressures. You know, the other thing I found just amazing in the study just three months ago was that they took epicadin, again, that workhorse found in chocolate, and found that it actually protected the heart after people were having heart attacks. As you know, we talked about hardening of the arteries, decreasing the blood flow to a heart muscle. There's no blood flow, and damage starts occurring, and then blood comes back again. 